Hello, Pennsylvania. Hello, Pennsylvania. Great people. Incredible people. And I'm thrilled to be here tonight in Erie, Pennsylvania, with thousands of loyal, hardworking, and beautiful American patriots. That's what you are. Before we begin, I want to send our thoughts and prayers of our entire nation to everyone in the path of Hurricane Michael, especially in the Florida panhandle where it's hitting and hitting hard. It's a big one, one of the biggest we've ever seen. All of Pennsylvania, all of America sends its unwavering love and support. Tonight, we are going to discuss the extraordinary achievements we've made for our fellow citizens in less than two years' time. You know, it's been less than two years. All those beautiful red hats make America great again. And we will discuss the next steps we must take to protect this amazing progress and to continue building an even greater future for all Americans. But this has been the greatest revolution ever to take place in our country. Here we are. Here we are. The greatest ever. I remember during the primaries and prior to the election, they were saying, wow, this is, this is something, not, there's been nothing like this since Ronald Reagan. Then it kept going and going and going, and then we actually won. In Tennessee, I remember a great Congressman Duncan, they said, he said, sir, early voting, he said, sir, they're coming from the hills, the valleys, people that haven't voted for a long time because they didn't want to vote for the people that were running for office, and they've got Trump banners and Trump hats and Trump tattoos. I've never seen anything like it. And then after that, they said, well, we have to go back further than Ronald Reagan. So they talked about Andrew Jackson. I said, let's see, the 1830s, that's a long time. And then they said on election night that this superseded even Andrew Jackson. So you won it, it's yours, and we're doing well. We're doing well. And this has been a historic week for our nation, and you know what I'm talking about. You know, all my life I've heard that a president's most important decision is who he or she picks for the United States Supreme Court. And as you know, on Monday night, we proudly swore in the newest member of the United States Supreme Court, Justice Brett Kavanaugh. What the radical Democrats did to Brett Kavanaugh and his beautiful family is a national disgrace. It's a disgrace. You look at Cory Booker, the way he talked, and then you look at what he did. You look at Senator Dianne Feinstein, what she did. The disgraceful behavior, the disgraceful leaking of documents. You look at what they did. You look at the false charges. You look at the false accusations. It was a disgrace. It was a disgrace. And people were saying, thank you, sir, for sticking, and thank you for not giving up. You know what? I never even thought of it, folks. I never even thought of it. Never even thought of it. But on November 6th, you can vote to reject the Democrats' shameful conduct 
by electing Republican House. And really, we need it badly. We need these votes, a Republican Senate. <laughs> Under Republican leadership, America is booming, America is thriving, and America is winning like never before because we are finally putting America first. Just two days ago, the unemployment rate has fallen to the lowest level in 50 years. It was just announced that manufacturing confidence is at an all-time high, historic. Big thing confidence. You remember the previous administration, they said, Oh, you can't bring back manufacturing jobs, really? You can't bring back. That was wrong. Remember they said, you'd need a magic wand. Well, we get, I guess we have, right? We have a magic wand. And those are our great jobs. And we are unleashing the power of Pennsylvania shale and clean, beautiful Pennsylvania coal. Beautiful, beautiful, clean coal. We are putting our miners back to work. We are putting our steel workers back to work. And by the way, I don't know how many people are in the steel industry, but one of the hottest industries, and this was dying, the steel industry is dead and dying. One of the hottest industries right now in our country is American steel. <laughs> U.S. Steel is opening and expanding seven different plants and spending a tremendous billions of dollars doing it. And what does it mean for you? Jobs, jobs, very simple. What does it mean for our country? What does it mean for our country? We can't lose the steel industry. The steel industry was on its last legs, and now, after four months of really intensely doing what I do, it's thriving. It is thriving. It's amazing, actually. Amazing. And what did we do? We essentially stopped the dumping. They were dumping garbage all over our country. It wasn't even good. It was sand steel. It was rotted steel. It was garbage. They're dumping it all over our country. So now we can take our own metallurgic ore out of our own minds, that we can bring it here and to other places, that we can actually have our industry. We don't need this product coming in untested from other countries. We don't need it, folks. We've got it here. We don't need it. And you watch what's going to happen with jobs, and you watch what's going to happen with price. Very proud of that industry. After years of rebuilding other nations, we are finally rebuilding our nation. But if Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats take over Congress, they will try to raise your taxes. We've lowered them tremendously. Impose socialism, which is where they're coming from and take over and destroy American health care. And you see how well we're doing with health care. You see it. Democrats want to abolish America's borders and allow drugs and gangs to pour into our country unabetted. And I say this, and I mean this. The Democrats are the party of crime. That's what's happening. They are the party of crime. Republicans are the party of law, order, and justice. And we are also 
the party of jobs, jobs, jobs. You see that? We're thrilled to be joined tonight by several really terrific friends of mine, Pennsylvania Republicans, including a man that's helped me so much in Washington, like tax cuts, like regulation cuts, like many other things, Congressman G.T. Thompson. A man who's really doing well, if you believe in polls. I believe in polls. Only the ones that have us up, because they're the only honest ones. Other than that, they're the fake news polls. Fake news. Fake news. You know, they take these polls, they show them, I say, that can't be right. What they want to do is keep you out of the voting booth. Take your wife, take your husband, go to a movie, come back, watch the results. You say, you know, I love so-and-so, but the polls say he can't win. Darling, let's go to a movie tonight. We'll go home and we'll watch. And that's what happens. They talk you out of it. They're dishonest, just like their reporting is dishonest. Their polls are dishonest. And yet there were some that got us very right on that great, great evening. Was that the most exciting evening of our lives? <laughs> remember we won Florida? And remember John King, nice guy, at CNN. Fake news, CNN. <laughs> remember, early, it was early, and we won by a lot. Won Florida by a lot. Remember? The red, right? The red, beautiful red. I never liked red so much. <laughs> Against the blue, I didn't like blue. And the whole map is like red. And he's going crazy. But early, Donald Trump has won the state of Florida. Oh my God. <laughs> Donald Trump has won the state of Florida. Oh, that was upsetting to me. Remember when they said that Texas would be long, it would be a long call, go late into the night, because they said it's just going to be too close to call. So the, the polls closed at 8 o'clock, and they never call them early unless you win by a landslide, right? So the polls, closed. the polls have closed in the state of Texas. Donald Trump has won the state of Texas, right? So what's that all about? Utah. Remember, it was so, it was so close, Utah. They had a guy that I never saw before. I don't know, this guy. Do you know who I'm talking about? And they had Crooked Hillary, the three of us. And this guy was supposed to come in second, but I was going to be, it's going to be very close. Maybe I could edge, but this guy was going to come either first or second, and Crooked Hillary was supposed to be third. So the Utah, great people. We just gave over millions of acres of great space, public space to Utah. So what happens? What happens? So they say, oh, for weeks I'm hearing how close Utah is. So the polls close at 8 o'clock. Uh, 8 o'clock and 3 seconds, Donald Trump has won the state of Utah. We want to buy... And on top of that, this guy came in third. He didn't even come in second. Crooked Hillary came in second. A long ways away. Long ways away. Remember? Anyway. But was that the most exciting night? Was that the greatest? Well, if you look at it, when you think of it, there was collusion between Hillary, the Democrats, and Russia. There was collusion. There's no question. There was a lot of collusion with them and Russia, and lots of other people, by the way. But, but, so you remember, so we win Florida. Then we had a, you know, to win the Electoral College is very tough. The other's easier. You go to three or four states, and you work, and you do it. But to win, you gotta be smart. You're right. You gotta be smart. You gotta be smart. 
They got, and you have to have great support. This is our support. But you got to run the whole East Coast. If you're a Republican, it's very, very hard. Electoral college is much harder than anything. Remember, they said, there is no path. I heard this so many times. I said to my wife, oh, our first lady, how's she doing? Good? So, I said to Melania, I said, I've heard there is no path. There is no path to 270, right? How many times have you heard that? Thousands? I've been hearing it for months. There is no path. And I kept going, I love this state. I kept going to Maine for one, because they had me at maybe, if I have a great night, 269. Of course, they could never say I could get 270. So I kept going to Maine five times, because I wanted to get one, and I ended up getting the one in Maine. But I also got Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. And what angered me, because I love this state. And I went to school in this state, right? I went to school in this state. I love Pennsylvania. I went to school in this state. Great place, great people. What angered me is Pennsylvania hasn't been won for many years by Republicans. But every Republican thinks they're going to win Pennsylvania. They didn't quite get it, but I got it. It's called the workers. I got it. Every Republican. I'd use an expression, you know, there's an expression, but under the rules of Me Too, I'm not allowed to use that expression anymore. I can't do it. It's the person that got away. See, in the old days, it was a little different. Pennsylvania, says do it anyway. I would do it, except for these people up there. They would say, did you hear what President Trump said? Did you hear what he said? So there is an expression, but we'll change the expression. Pennsylvania was always the person that got away. That's pretty good, right? The person that got away. And for many years, nobody, no Republican won Pennsylvania. And, but they always thought they were going to. Pennsylvania, great. And then they lost it by a lot. I said, I know we're going to win Pennsylvania, but all night long, they had one point. But if I lost every single vote in Pennsylvania, I was... 99% of the vote cast. And I said, will you please project Pennsylvania? Let Pennsylvania be the state where I win this election. I was winning North Carolina, South Carolina. We won Florida. We would do it. We were running the East Coast. And I kept saying, why aren't they? And ask them, ask them. Why aren't they announcing Pennsylvania? One point left, 99% of the vote cast, right? 99% of the vote cast. One point left. If I lost every single vote, I won Pennsylvania by a lot. I kept saying, why aren't they announcing Pennsylvania? I thought it must be some kind of a technical malfunction. <laughs> so they didn't do it until late in the evening. It stayed forever. I kept going, why aren't they announcing? I'd love to win with Pennsylvania. But honestly, then what happened? Out of the blue, Donald Trump has won the state of Wisconsin. <laughs> and then out of the blue, first time in decades, Donald Trump has won the state of Michigan. <laughs> and then finally they announced late in the morning, which we knew they just couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. They just couldn't. <laughs> Donald Trump has won the great state of Pennsylvania. They didn't do it that way. They didn't do it. They didn't do it that way. They did it with tears flowing down their face. This can't be happening, can this be? Do you see some of them crying? And we were all crying too out of happiness, right? Because there has never been anything like what we all did, okay? We did it together. A congressman came up to me the other day, said, sir, I've been winning for many years, and I'm a proud congressman. I've won many races, 10 to be exact. I've only lost three. I said, you lost three? Yes, a long time ago when I was young. And I'm very proud, I'm a real professional. I said, you know, 
I never thought of it that way, but I've only ran one time, the one race. It was for the presidency, and we won the presidency, right? We won the presidency. Now, I had to do it, because he was bragging about his political career. This wasn't Mike Kelly, by the way. Somebody else. And I had to do it. I said, I never thought of it that way, but I ran one time, and we won. Okay. And it's also the presidency, right? So, you know. But a man that's been a friend of mine for a long time, he's a tremendous man, and his name is Congressman Mike Kelly. He loves you people. So, he's a great guy, you gotta go vote for him. Let me just invite, just for a couple of seconds, Mike, please, come on up. Oh, oh, okay. You know what? Listen, listen, President Trump and I have so much in common. First of all, he loves Pennsylvania. And he, and he made a commitment tonight. He said, what can we do to make it even better in Erie than it is now? What can we do to take the greatest of the Great Lakes and make it better? I said, Mr. President, we need to get sand replenishment. He said, how much do you need? I said, I'm not sure. He said, let me know. You're going to get that sand. Yeah, and, then, and then he said, so what else? What else? I said, you know what? We need to get some dredging done in the channel so that we don't have to light load anymore and our ships can come in and out and get out to the world and bring goods in at a much cheaper price. And he said, you know what? We're going to do that too. Look, you know that in 2016, candidate Donald Trump came here to this same arena to a crowd that was almost as big as this. My God, we got thousands of people outside that just want to get in. There's just not enough room for all the love. He made promises to us in 2016. And people said, no, 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 no. There's no way he can do that. There's no way we can get there. My gosh, we just spent eight years of somebody telling us in the White House that America's best days have left her. I want to tell you something. Promises made, promises kept. The strongest personality the strongest president we have seen in our lifetime. USA, 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 USA. Listen, I am so grateful and so thankful that an American citizen came out of nowhere to take the reins and reform and recommit this country to the greatest, greatest nation the world has ever known. I got to tell you, I'm with you. We're all together. Let's go win. Let's go win. Let's go win. I want to introduce another congressman who has been a friend of mine also for a long time. And he had a very sad day yesterday. He lost his brother. He lost his brother. And he loved his brother like crazy. I said, how close? He said, the closest. A very, very strange, horrible thing happened. And he doesn't want to talk about it, but I will tell you, it's a hard thing for him. But he's a special man. He's a total winner. And he had a rough time the last few days. And something else happened on top of that. But I'm honored to introduce the next United States Senator from the state of Pennsylvania, my good friend, Lou Barletta.
Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, Mr. President, I know how much you love Pennsylvania. This is like the ninth or tenth time that you've been here, and uh, each time that you come, the list of promises made, promises kept gets longer and longer. And now uh, that's okay with us because now you're overseeing the greatest economy in American history right now. This economy is soaring. GDP last month was 4.2 percent, unemployment 3.7 percent. Uh, four million new jobs were created. And this is the stat I love the most. Four million Americans came off of food stamps. Four million Americans came off of food stamps. Black unemployment at an all-time low. Hispanic unemployment at an all-time low. Women's unemployment at a 64-year low. There are more jobs than people who are unemployed. And I'll tell you how good the economy is. This economy is so good that even Colin Kaepernick found a job. Listen, it's pretty clear. It's pretty clear why I'm running for Senate. I'm running for the Senate because the President did call and he said, I need you in the Senate. I'm running there because I want to help him, because we want to show respect for our law force in America once again. We want to take care of our veterans. No veteran should ever and will ever die waiting in line for health care in this country ever again. And we're going to support our military, those men and women who travel all over this world to make sure that we have the freedoms that we have and enjoy today and that our children and grandchildren will have that same freedom. We're going to, we're going to take care of our seniors. We're going to protect the unborn. We're going to put an end to illegal immigration. We're going to, we're going to build the wall. We're going to build the wall. And we are going to kneel when we pray and stand for the flag. No, Mr. President. No, Mr. President, we're not tired of winning in Pennsylvania. We're going to win again in November. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless the United States. Thank you. So while Lou is fighting for you, Bob Casey is fighting to protect violent criminal aliens. That's what he's doing. Bob Casey voted in favor of deadly sanctuary cities that release thousands upon thousands of illegal alien criminals and vicious gang members to prey on Pennsylvania streets, to prey all over this country. No good. No good. For example, the sanctuary city of Philadelphia. Can you believe this? Can you believe that one? That one I didn't expect to be hearing. Released a criminal alien who was recently convicted of raping and battering a very young child. Bob Casey defends criminals while attacking our brave ICE agents. He wants to get rid of ICE. Lou Barletta and the Republican Party will always stand for the heroes of ICE, Border Patrol, and our great, great law enforcement. These are great people. Bob Casey even voted against Kate's Law, named for Kate Steinle, who was gunned down by a five-time deported illegal alien, should have never been in our country. Bob Casey puts criminal aliens before American citizens, always has. By the way, how do you have such a liberal guy in the state of Pennsylvania? I'm trying to figure that out. Oh, he's banking on the name of his father. That's no good. Which is why he needs to be voted out of office. He has to be voted out of office. Casey also voted against tax cuts against Pennsylvania coal. He joined the left-wing mob by voting against Brett Kavanaugh. If you want to save American lives and save American jobs and keep things going like they're going now, which is better economically than any time in the history of our country, 
then you need to vote for a pro-American patriot. And he really is a patriot. He loves his country. Named Lou Barletta. Get out and vote, please. Get out and vote. Also at stake in this election is Medicare. Democrats support a socialist takeover of health care that would totally obliterate Medicare. Republicans want to protect Medicare for our great seniors who have earned it and who have paid for it all their lives. Since the election, as Lewis said, we've created over 4.2 million new jobs and lifted over 4 million people off of food stamps. We've added almost 600,000 new manufacturing jobs. They were supposed to be gone forever. African-American unemployment has reached its lowest level in history. History. Hispanic American and Asian American unemployment has also reached historic lows, lowest in history. And I, as I always say, I'm sure you've heard it, I hate to say it again because I know the number's gonna be changing very soon. It's gonna be even better. Women's unemployment has just fallen to 3.6%, which is only the lowest rate in 65 years. I'm sorry, I keep saying it. Women, women for Trump. Women. Remember how badly I was going to do with women? I said, am I so bad? Remember how badly? And then I got 52% of the vote and everybody said he beat Crooked Hillary. What happened? What happened? Remember that? After years of being let down by Washington politicians, you now have a champion fighting for you in the White House. But I need your help this election day, November 6th, to stop the radical Democrat mob from trying to take it away. They're going to try and take it away. They're going to try and take it away. I need you to show up at the polls to continue this incredible movement like the country has never seen before. Like probably very few countries, frankly, have ever seen before. The only reason to vote Democrat is if you are tired of winning. Then you should vote Democrat. For many years, our country was being pillaged and plundered by unfair trade deals. Pennsylvania lost one in three manufacturing jobs. You know it well. I spent lots of time with you folks up here. You know it well. Following the twin disasters of NAFTA and China's entrance pushed by us into the WTO, World Trade Organization, perhaps the only deal worse than NAFTA. We got them both. They were both beauties, were they? But the era of economic surrender is over. America is not being taken advantage of anymore. Sorry. America is respected again. America is respected again. Last week, I announced that we are replacing NAFTA with an incredible brand new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement called USMCA. I didn't want to use the word NAFTA. To create jobs and boost incomes, Republicans passed the biggest package of tax cuts and reforms in American history. We've taken historic action to reduce the price of prescription drugs. Did you see? Did you see four weeks ago when Pfizer and Novartis and other drug companies raised the prices of their drugs very, very substantially. And I didn't like it, and I called them. I said, can't do that. Can't do that.
And the first time, and I give them credit, and I really thank them too, honestly. But first time in history, they rescinded their price increase and they kept it the same and they promised no increase for a substantial time. But we're going to get them down. And when I called them up and they agreed to immediately rescind, perhaps that's the first time I realized how powerful it is to be the President of the United States. And to help critically ill patients access life-saving treatments, we pass something called Right to Try. People that are terminally ill were given no chance, no hope. We have incredible drugs in the pipeline that can cure really horrible, horrific disease. We wouldn't let anyone use these drugs because they didn't want to hurt them, but they're going to die. They're terminally ill. I said, what are we doing? And two months ago, I signed Right to Try. Somebody's terminally ill, we can try. And we've had great success. We've had great success. And by the way, in all fairness, you also find out whether or not it works. Not so bad. They've been trying to pass it for 40 years. We got it passed. And that's because of your Congress. That's because of your Congress. That are with us tonight. We also passed Veterans Choice giving our veterans the right to see a private doctor, right? Our veterans. 44 years they tried to pass it. When I first heard about it, I mean, it's not like I was studying it for my whole life, but I heard about it three and a half years ago. I said, hey, I have an idea. Let's when they wait online for 10 days, 22 days, 38 days, you have to see months and months. Why don't we let them go see a private doctor and we pay the bill? It'll solve a problem. And I told everybody I am the most brilliant guy in the world. Who else would think? Who else would think of that? So I go back to my paper. I said, listen, I have this great idea. They said, actually, sir, we've been trying to get that idea passed for 44 years. I'm good at getting things passed. We signed it three months ago. For our vets. And the landmark VA accountability law to ensure anyone who mistreats our great veterans can be held accountable. In other words, they're immediately fired. Not easy to get past. They've been trying that one for about 46 years. We got that one passed, too. So you think that was easy getting that by? I know you have a lot of union guys here, but you think that was easy getting that by the unions? Do you think that was easy getting that passed by civil service? Not too easy. We got it passed. Somebody does something bad to our veterans, we fire them on the spot. And we secured $716 billion to fully rebuild the American military, and we gave our great warriors their largest pay raise in almost a decade. At my direction, the Pentagon is now working to create the sixth branch of the American Armed Forces, the Space Force. Very important. It's where it's at. That's where it's going. We want to always be the best. I withdrew the United States from the horrible, one-sided Iran nuclear deal. And I've recognized the capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. Many, many presidents talked about they were going to do it, and they never had whatever it takes to do it. And I understand why, because there was a lot of pressure on that one. There were a lot of forces saying, don't do it. I say, uh, excuse me, get lost. But we did. 
For years you watched as your leaders apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America. We are standing up for your values. We are standing up for Pennsylvania. We are standing proud for our national anthem. About time. I need you to get your friends, get your families, get your neighbors, get your co-workers, and get out and vote Republican, vote for Lou, vote for Mike, vote for all of these great people here. A vote for a Republican Congress is a vote for lower taxes, less regulation, and more products made right here in the USA. You have the power with your vote to defend your family, your country, your values, your faith, and indeed to defend your dignity. Loyal citizens like you helped to build this country. And together we are taking back our country, returning power back to the American people where it belongs. Pennsylvania is the state that rang the Liberty Bell, forged the railroads, and put steel into the spine of our country. Generations of Pennsylvania workers manned the furnaces, farmed the fields, and fought the battles that made America into the most powerful and prosperous nation in the history of the world. Unfortunately, years ago, they lost their way, but we have gotten that way back. These courageous Pennsylvania patriots did not shed their blood, sweat, and tears so that we could sit at home while others try to erase their legacy and destroy our great and proud American heritage. For the sake of freedom, for the sake of our children, we are going to work, we are going to fight, and we are going to win, win, win. We will not bend. We will not break. We will never give in. We will never give up. We will never back down. And we will never surrender. And we will always fight on to victory. Because we are American. And our hearts bleed red, white, and blue. We are one people one family, and one glorious nation under God. And always remember, together we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Pennsylvania. Thank you.